It is our pleasure to welcome you to London for the FEI Dressage World Cup, the Western European League. Four leagues make this series truly global, provide athletes from all around the world with an opportunity to qualify for the final, which will be taking place in Omaha in April 2023. As one of the most uh, prestigious series on the international dressage calendar, it is with great anticipation that we watch this season's qualifiers unfold and reveal for whom the doors to the final in Omaha will open. And the FBI would like to wish every athlete competing the very best of luck and encourage fans to participate in scoring in the FBI E-League by downloading the Spectator Judging app. Well, it's a, it's a very good feel, Steve. Some 16, 15 forward with uh, combinations from Great Britain. Singapore, Spain, the Netherlands, Belgium, Ireland, Canada, Australia, Germany, and France that are joining us here this afternoon. Absolutely, and making our way through that series that takes them around Europe for that Western European League. And of course, in the last few weeks, we've seen them in the likes of Madrid for top competition there. Lyon, Stuttgart up coming to into the next season as well, into the Mechelen Basel, and a host of top events. And Amsterdam. And Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Absolutely, I'm Amsterdam sure at the uh, end of January, no one and then uh, on to the finals, of course, in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, in the USA uh, this time around. So looking forward to how uh, that all comes together. So uh, lots coming up over the uh, next couple of days, dressage, of course, as well with uh, our rundown of uh, the competition set today and tomorrow into the freestyle too. But the good thing is, Nick, and the great thing if you're competing here in London is it brings some of the world's very best not only here, but the great news is right now and continuing, Great Britain has some of the world's best. And as we saw earlier on in our unwrapping of the Christmas <laughs> dressage team with that uh, British dressage international trophy going to the double world champion of Lottie and Glamourdale. And that is Unbelievable. Absolutely. Wasn't it fabulous to see Utopia here this afternoon? It was well? wonderful, wonderful to see. And the atmosphere of those world championships when they were winning there was just absolutely electric, wouldn't do it uh, any kind of justice. It was absolutely amazing. And we're bringing that here to London. We certainly are with these 15 uh, competing over two legs. This very much the Grand Prix, uh, the short Grand Prix. Uh, and it was a uh, short Grand Prix that. Olympia, the London International yes. Show, introduced to dressage in 2018. And there were a lot of detractors then, but now the uh, athletes and the horses have really got behind it. And it really is very, very important. This is the short Grand Prix. Absolutely, it brings uh, a whole new flavour to it. And of course, you see. to the judges minus their frocks uh, for dancing here this afternoon but they are a wonderful lineup starting with E and that is Peter Storr of Great Britain. Peter who rode to uh, top international level himself as he stands up. Lovely to see you. Give us a wave Peter. Lovely to see you with us here and he's now uh, judging through the championship level as well. 
Another experienced uh, dressage judge again through to major championships now, and he joins us from Sweden. And we say a very good afternoon to uh, Magnus Rigmark. Magnus is going to be at age. Give us a little wave, Magnus. Good to see you here. My judge at sea, the president today. Uh, for Denmark is uh, Suzanne Vara, and of course those are world championships in Denmark earlier on this year. At M, a wonderful face familiar to the world of dressage. He is one of the world's best, having judged at multiple Olympic Games. And M, it is Great Britain, Stephen Clark. Very good afternoon, Stephen. Lovely to see you here with us as well. Lovely to have his expert opinion all the time. And at B, B for Belgium this time around. And Jacques Van Dahl. Jacques, a very good afternoon to you, Sue. Give us a little wave, Jacques. It is lovely to see you. Our five judges, of course, giving their scores. We'll come out with a percentage score here for this uh, Grand Prix this afternoon, supported by Horse and Hand. Like we say, set group of movements through the 26 movements today, tomorrow, a little more variation there with the freestyle. One of the most elegant equestrian disciplines returns indoors for a brand new season, showcasing the ultimate expression of horse and athlete working in harmony. The world's most awe-inspiring combinations will compete for their ticket to the FEI Dressage World Cup Final in April 2023. With emotional intensity and attention to detail on display, this is the pursuit of perfection. Well, also to go with our first as part of this uh, short format Grand Prix here this afternoon, supported by your uh, horse and And so uh, as they make their way down the uh, tunnel, we're making the first four at Great Britain. He's been a part of the uh, major championship teams uh, for Great Britain before now, including two Olympic Games, four World Championships, six Europeans, including Team Gold in 2000 and uh, based on across the street, a massive driving force for the sport as well. With an 11 year old today, the now my award 28 is Belle View. It is a very good afternoon to great presidents, Emil Bari.
good expression in these two time changes. Oh, just missed one there. That's a shame. Just those couple of mistakes towards the end of that line. It's the first time we've seen any real mistake. Everything else has been on target. Absolutely. Oh, and a little mistake there in the PF. Just lost the rhythm, stepped a little bit wide. And now he's got the ones down the center line. There really is nowhere to hide with these one time changes very similar to the line that they ride in the Grand Prix Special. And see him just having to half hold balance onto the hind leg to really get her coming up into a lovely uphill canter. Just for me, a little bit flat on that second canter pirouette. Obviously didn't have the mistakes that the first one had, so. Emil has really done such a fabulous job with this mare. He's brought so many horses up to this level and is so consistent. And this mare is definitely a real star for the future, her second ever International Grand Prix. Very, very exciting and still only 11 years old. As ever, As ever with Emil. He's not one to rush. He'll take his time in developing and producing the horses and bring them forward when they're ready. Yeah, he really is about getting the basics right and then that everything else builds from the basics. And, you know, that really shows in the test that he's ridden today. Yeah, I think that's really clear from the score as well, because had it not been for those uh, minor little errors, you would have seen a 70% mark right off the bat. And I think, you know, Emil smiling away up there as he wraps up with uh, Bellevue. But it was just consistent. And what I've come to learn with the way the judges award their marks, hit your mark, perform the movement correctly, yeah. you get your seven. Absolutely. And you get your 70%. And, and that was going all the way there. It was just those two so, tiny moments. Yeah, it was a real pity about those couple of mistakes, and they happen quite closely together. Um, but overall, like you said, if you if you don't make mistakes and everything is correct, the horse is correct in its way of going, it's soft over the back, then the judges can't not give it a seven. Um, just again there at the end of the half pass, you could just see her getting a little bit tight, and this was a really, really lovely PF at the start. A little bit of travelling, but kept that lovely rhythm, kept that activity and remained in a really really good position well we'll look forward in a moment to the uh, scores coming through as the mill heads out the back and here it is 70.526 70 70.1326 and 68.289 so consistent but it is at 69.737 percent for Emil as the first to go here. So Emil Fari there and Bellevue setting the stand at 69.732. But let's move on because another big name in British dressage and a man that was part of the silver medal winning team at the World Championships this year. He's uh, well, so many championships. It was lovely to see him rewarded. I mean, he got Team Silver on his debut at the Europeans back in 1993, and then he had to wait all the way to 2022. It is, of course, uh, Richard Davison and uh, Bubbling, and this has been such a brilliant ride. I mean, it's a 16-year-old gelding now, and uh, a partnership that just seemed to get better and better. Yeah, it's a horse that definitely grows in confidence as he's got older. Um, I always used to say he, he had the tendency to bubble over sometimes when the atmosphere got a little bit too much, but I think, you know, it's testament to Richard's riding and to the amount of exposure that he's given this horse and he did see a little bit of tension creeping in at the world championships um, but I think he's going to be on fire today. Fingers crossed he went well here at Excel last year. This is a combination in terms of Grand Prix performances that have scored over 73% before the world championship score back in the summer 68.851 and hopefully now just using those moments which are so key just before you start to really allow the horse to relax but also make sure you are ready absolutely well actually he's gone over the allocated amount of time so he will get a penalty for coming into the arena late good spot 
technical penalties awarded. Again, another lovely square halt to start with. to see more of a difference shown there in the extended trot a little bit more coming from behind there with those extended trots i always hear people talking about take more risk yeah really let that sort of action unfold yeah it's hard when you have a hot horse because that's when the mistakes can then happen and it's about those calculated risks i think in dressage and, and feeling your horse on the day and whether you think you can push for a nine or a ten or actually maybe sometimes you have to play it a little bit careful and then maybe later on in the test is when you can make more calculated risks when the horse is a little bit more relaxed and settled in the arena but that's really about that relationship and knowing your horse incredibly well and how they're going to react in this kind of atmosphere completely clear with the halts and I think that will inevitably just bring the marks down a little bit. Nice activity here coming into the PR. Nicely on the spot. Just lost a bit of the fluency there coming out it back into the passage. This is often where the tension can keep it creep in with these Grand Prix horses. When you've asked them for the highest level of collection in the PF passage work, and then you're asking them for the full relaxation in the walk, and you can just see the horse's tongue creeping out there. So he'll also lose marks for that, unfortunately. I think that may have been the reason actually why he was late into the arena. I did see it popping out just before he came down the centre line see it again there. So the horse is allowed to poke their tongue down and not lose marks, but not out to the side. Is that something horses can get in a habit of doing? Or is it something that just happens naturally? Yeah, absolutely. It, it can be a habit thing, um, a bit like grinding their teeth. It can come in with a bit of tension, um, but also some horses might just be prone to it because they have a bigger tongue. Um, and so uh, it can just creep out. And that's where you have to be really careful with bit fittings and bridle fittings and really make sure that you're getting the best for the horse so they are comfortable. And it can also be a sign of them getting their tongue over the bit. Nicely balanced there into the canter pirouette. <laughs> Lovely expressive one-time changes on the centre line. And you can see him there on the last change, really prepping already for that uh, canter pirouette. Really getting that inside bend and that flexion through the rib cage to really enable him to sit and take the weight behind in the canter pirouette and really come up and lift through the shoulder. And this is where we're able to see a difference between the horse Emil was riding and the horse Richard is riding, because this is a horse that's just had those extra years, those extra mileage, and it's that constant evolution of muscle structure, of body mass, and uh, just being able to bend and be supple in all the correct ways. Absolutely, and that's again where it's a fine line with dressage because you want the horses to have the experience and the exposure at this level. And then when they start getting a little bit older, that's when they might need a little bit more help with the suppleness because as like us, as we get older, we get a little bit stiffer in places. Um, you know, and horses are exactly the same. I agree. <laughs> well, Richard coming down towards the finish. It's been another brilliant year for Richard. It was brilliant to see him on the podium in the summer in Herning. It was richly deserved. And a man with his feet absolutely dedicated to this sport throughout his career. 
and uh, the Will bubbling still Denison. bubbling along. He is, though, inevitably just going to get those uh, technical penalties put against him, which will, of course, just have a little bit of an impact on his marks right the way back at the start. And there were moments of real highlights. There were moments that perhaps didn't work out quite so well. But uh, certainly in uh, the pirouettes and those one-time changes, I think worked really, really well. But that, again, just really showing the experience of Ted. Yeah, absolutely. There really was some highlights. And I think the overall general way of going of this horse was really, really lovely today. And if you take the tongue out of it, I thought he was much more in self than I've seen him and you know when this horse gets tense that's when he can clam up a little bit get a little bit tight in the back and that happened so much less today a little bit here actually in, in the slow-mo but in the canter work he was beautifully soft over the back really really nice and supple and that really enables him to be able to take that weight and, and really have such great balance throughout the test. Well, I get a feeling we're going to see the scores for Richard and Bubbling in a moment. Because, of course, as the second out, we uh, see them in. And there they are, 70.842, 68.079, 68.737, 69.395, 69.400, 69.400. Just shy of 70%. But even then, it is still the strongest of the marks, even with that technical penalty at the beginning. He is uh, a final score is 69, 9, 7, 9. So uh, even more to come, or could have come, from that uh, overall score. Moving on to uh, Singapore, to uh, Caroline Chu and uh, Tribbiani. Now, this 18-year-old gelding has been what I would class as the partner of a lifetime to uh, Caroline. The uh, combination that has uh, been to championships, from, uh, world championships this year, in fact, in earning, as well as the world games in the past. But they've also represented Singapore, importantly, at the Southeast Asia Games back in 2015 and 2017, where they were both silver medalists. This year, though, was actually a highlight because they set their personal bests. They came in Hartbury. Yeah. So... It, it's another combination that is sort of defying age, showing that you can continue to grow in strength and Caroline in her own abilities as well. Harbury was a real standout this year in both the freestyle and the Grand Prix. The next up in the short test here in London, Caroline Chu and Tribbiani. Yeah, like you say, like the last partnership, just getting better with age. And of course, Caroline's not a full-time rider. She's a solicitor in London as well, spends half of her time in London working and then riding uh, as a pastime, really. And, you know, this is a pretty amazing level to get to. That's an unbelievable achievement. Isn't it? Because this is a sport that you have to be absolutely dedicated to it. It shows, you know, how hard it must be, I mean, to be able to do both is quite something. She has an amazing team around her. She's based with Matt Frost, and I know Matt rides this horse while she's not around and is an integral part of the team. It was lovely, actually. I was stabled with her at the World Championships in Herning, and they were just absolutely overjoyed, and they didn't have a great time in Tokyo because there was blood found in, this horse is called Joey, there was blood found in Joey's mouth, which was such a shame, and so she, she had to withdraw from Tokyo, and uh, but now she's back and she's doing so well. A beautiful halt there at sea, really nice and square. Some nice activity coming into the passage and this is where, yeah, this is where it can drop a little bit. Nice once it's established there, it was just lost the activity and the fluency going into the PR. Better in the transition back into the passage. Nice and relaxed here in the walk, really taking that contact down. Could have a little bit more activity. 
activity here in the collective walk. A lovely transition to canter. get that impression from watching them that he really wants to get it right for his rider for his mum yeah he's really putting all his effort in a really genuine horse and that's the thing when you've got them on side they'll do anything for you and that's a real, real testament to their partnership lovely two-time changes Again, for the higher marks, I'd just like to see a little bit more activity there. You can see he can, he knows those counter pirouettes are coming up. He knows this test so well. He has such a great ability to sit in the counter work. Lovely activity in the ones really nicely ridden and beautifully straight on the center line. Again, just at times I'd like to see a little bit more, push a little bit more jump in the canter. Final centre line. Well, certainly from the marks and the average we've been watching in that corner of the screen and the consistency that she's brought to bear in this test so far, Caroline and Triviani putting in one of their strongest performances here in London. What a place to do it. Much better in the PF there on the centre line really lovely in those transitions, kept the activity throughout. A great job. What an amazing performance from Caroline Chu and uh, Tribbiani will wait for those uh, final marks with uh, great trepidation because uh, that was a uh, really neatly ridden test. Her face isn't giving much away, <laughs> but hopefully she's happy. <laughs> I think that could be enough to put her in the lead, I would say. A real nice mistake-free test. Very correct in its way of going. Lovely steps there in the extended trot. Lovely harmony, as you said, Gareth, between the two of them. And look at that halt there at sea. Bang on the marker, beautifully straight. This, and nice this transition and was beautiful. It yeah. played all the way through. No, we didn't quite get that far. <laughs> and those lovely straight one-time changes down the centre line. As I said, there's nowhere to hide. All of the judges have a very clear view, and the judge at sea can see exactly how straight you are. And then she beautifully prepared this cancer pirouette, got that weight on the hind leg. Lovely uphill transition into the canter. Well, as you can see, really nice to see. Well, the uh, marks are just about ready because here they come. Caroline Jew and Dribiani have taken the lead. There's the breakdown, EHCM and B. Ultimately, it's the total we care about. 69.974 for Caroline and uh, Dribiani. It's exceptionally tight in these early stages to the point that that is exactly the same mark as Richard. Yeah, absolutely. So Richard's general marks would have been a little bit lower given the technical um, errors that were made. So that's why Caroline Chu, although she's on the same score, will be just above Richard. Well, on we go. Let's wait to see what else we get to enjoy. There's an unbelievable number of nations here in London. In fact, a few of us have commented on the fact we're not sure the last time 10 different countries 
came down the centre line. It's fantastic to see, isn't it? And uh, this is Spain's turn, a uh, rider horse here last year. They finished in eighth in the freestyle last year. And it is the turn of Spain now with Alejandro uh, Asinia Menedes riding the 12-year-old by Fiorano. This is Focus and uh, a uh, rider. Not had that many outings this year, but uh, did go to Doha to the five-star in the early part of the season. More recently was in the four-star and in winning form in the special in Madrid. That was back in October. That was their last outing. So exciting to see as they return to London for Spain, Alejandro Athenio Menes. Just leaving a right hind leg out in that initial halt. And they're little marks that can actually make quite a big difference. You know, we've got three halts in this test. If you can get three square halts on the marker, you know, that, that's easy marks, although square halts aren't as easy as that to ride. <laughs> they never look that easy to ride. <laughs> but this looks easy, to be fair. I mean, riders just have this innate habit of making it all look so simple. And they look like they're just gliding along. Yeah, just lost a bit of the activity there coming around. I think that was a bit of miscommunication at the beginning of that trot half pass. Just generally, I'd like to see the horse take a bit of a breath and relax over the top line a little bit more. So this is the second hold. And again, early there on the marker, um, a little bit too quick, just losing the rhythm there in the rain back. Oh, just getting a little untidy. Just occasionally just getting a little bit short in the neck, just that tension just seems to bobble out every now and then. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see the horse is just a little bit tight in the back under where the, the rider's sitting, and that's what then creates the, the neck issue. And, and if he can just get it a little bit softer over the top line, that's when things like that PF is going to get better. And the smoothness of the transitions there as well. You know, when, when the horses are a little bit tight, that's when the transitions can be a little bit too abrupt. Whereas if the horse is nice and soft and listening, it takes the smallest of age to come from a trot to a walk. But when they're a little bit tight, sometimes it can be just a little bit exaggerated and a little bit abrupt. Again, we can see a little bit of tightness there in the walk. Just needed to watch the regularity of the rhythm. Yeah, and you get to see that little bit of a dip in the markings coming through as well, just following that collected walk. Some nice steps in the counter half pass again just sometimes losing the straightness in that line good expressive changes here really nice and uphill in the canter a little bit of swinging in the changes but again that's when the horse gets really really secure in those changes when they can ride them a lot straighter on the diagonal line and that comes from a lot of training. And again, you can see here, him having to hold the horse up a little bit rather than the horse really able to sit and take the weight on the hind leg and come up nicely through the shoulder. Some good steps here in the extended canter. Definitely a combination that look like the deeper they're getting into the test, they've relaxed that little bit more and it's all beginning just to flow that much clearer. 
Absolutely, and hopefully the confidence that they've gained here in the short Grand Prix, they'll then bring that forward tomorrow for the freestyle and the horse will come into the arena a lot more settled. And of course, these ha horses have had arena familiarization in this arena yesterday, but it's very different under the atmosphere when there's people in the crowd, there's the judges' boxes, there's the arena set out, you're plattered up and your rider's got their tails on. It's, it's very, very different in training to, to being in competition. Yeah, horses know the difference. There's no doubt about that. They know when it's uh, the day to perform and the day just to rehearse. Definitely. Well, the performance is complete for the combination for Spain here in London for this uh, Grand Prix, the FBI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. That there was Focus and Alejandro Asilio Menedev. Definitely a test that strengthened up in the back half once things had settled down a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And you could just see them growing with confidence throughout. They came in being a little bit tight. And then I feel like once the canter work crept in, that's when the horse started to soften and take a breath and relax into it. So it'll be interesting tomorrow. I always find it interesting how they actually configure their freestyle plans together. Because for horses that improve in the canter work, I would always tend to put the canter work at the beginning of the test. Well, no, absolutely. You've got to play to your strengths. Absolutely. It's like if, if a horse hasn't got a great walk, go and hide it down the other yeah. end of the ring. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, no, and that is something that you have to sort of really get into the mindset of riders and actually really understand how detailed those designs of those freestyles are. But those are the those are the things we don't often think about, but they're so true. Yeah, and often I uh, I used to get really annoyed when people thought that our sport looked easy, but actually now I take it as the biggest compliment because if it looks easy, that means that we're doing the right thing. Well, I couldn't agree more because when you watch this and you certainly see it in the freestyle tomorrow, the very sort of top end scores, that's when the riders really do look. You all look like you're sat there doing nothing. <laughs> And I know that's we're not doing true. An awful lot, I know. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> Look, there's your set of marks: five scores and a total, 67-71. It is. It's a fourth of the scores. But like you're saying, Tash, he can take from today, work to tomorrow. The horse will be more settled. It'll know what's going to happen, and then you're in that routine. You're doing your freestyle, which I guess you're more used to doing than perhaps rehearsing a short Grand Prix. Yeah, I, I think it, it depends on the horse, to be honest. Sometimes, because the Grand Prix horses are riding the tame test over and over again, they, they can get so adjusted to riding it all of the time and therefore they can predict or anticipate the next movement that's coming along and actually that can be a bit of a weakness or a bit of a disadvantage at times so it, it's about learning how your horse works and some horses love practicing the test over and over and over again and other horses actually that doesn't work at all so yeah it, it, it depends <laughs> Horses for courses, it's, horses always, for courses. it's always going to be a little bit different. That's the one Absolutely. thing. And that's part of what is so great about horse sport, whether it be dress up, jumping, driving or anything else. It, you know, every horse is like we are. We're all so different. Yeah. They're all so different. And you've got to get that understanding. And yeah. First of all, that just takes time. And then even when you've got that understanding, it's about bringing all those uh, different spheres together, the training, the fitness, and everything else. And that's why I'm always so just in awe of what riders do, because it is, it's just completely sensational. This, this relationship, this development of a relationship that you have with your horses. And I guess that's one thing in dressage, I mean, we could even go on to what that's like in para sport with your sales and the other para athletes, where again, that, that goes again to another dimension. It's a different level again. But it all starts with that simple relationship, understand your horse, work each other out. And it is, they've got to work you out as well, haven't they? Absolutely. Every day is a school day with horses. And I think actually sometimes, you know, the more you know a horse, the better. But also, they, the more they know you as well. And, uh, and I think that's when these relationships really come and they really blossom. And, you know, we saw Charlotte Dujardin and Vallegro coming out in London and that was still 
still relatively new in their relationship. And then we saw the improvement uh, in Rio and, and the way that they progressed in those four years. And that was really wonderful to see. And that is when you can see those relationships really, really coming into their own. Well, as you can see, just coming into their own is the next to go. Tremendous to see this man with us in London. It's the Dutch challenge here for this leg of the World Cup season. And uh, of course, therefore, it's Hans Peter Minderhold riding Glock's Dream Boy, 14 year old stallion by Vivaldi. And this is a man that has competed at every single level of the sport. And of course, is a former winner of the FEI Dressart World Cup title himself. Yes, and uh, I was very fortunate to commentate on him in Mechlin, and I'm pretty sure it was 2018 when he won, and that was such an amazing test. I think it was something like 83% that he got, and uh, and he was absolutely on fire. And he's had a bit of a break this year. He, he went to Doha at the beginning of the year, and we haven't seen him since. And of course, he would have been a favorite for going to the World Championships, but the Dutch team really shook it up this year with their team, and they had some new faces, which was great to see. Well, you're absolutely right with the, with, uh, the Mechlin 83%. That Yay. was their uh, one win together on the World Cup circuit. And uh, in fact, still stands as their personal best. So 83.665, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Grand Prix wise, a personal best came uh, last year in Rotterdam. They did go very well out in Doha back in February when they finished third in both the Grand Prix and the freestyle. Of course, part of Tokyo all the way through last year, Glock's Dream Boy for the Netherlands with Hans Peter Minderholt. And again, this stallion also used for breeding has a number of super talented offspring. It's just so naturally uphill. Lovely ground cover here in the extended trot. Lovely positioning here in the trot half pass. Okay, great crossing, really nice positioning. And this is where we're starting to see a step change from yeah. what we were watching to what we're now seeing. And it, it's just that additional sort of elasticity, that additional flair, that additional way to just bring expression to the movement to be able to lift that movement up and in turn just begin to push the score up as well yeah absolutely it's that lightness i think and the expression like you say that the judges are really looking for and instead of sitting on the sevens then they're sitting on the 7.5s or maybe creeping up to the eights that's a lovely position there in the passage just at times i feel like it loses the fluency a little bit you can see Hans Peter really having to to work hard up there and, and ask uh, Dream Boy to, to do some of the movements and really pick him up sometimes and that kind of goes a little bit against what we were saying about it looking easy and so you know obviously this ha horse has, has had a break and so it's going to be those little reminders that he needs to give him and I think you know give him another few months and that's when we will see those aids soften a little bit. Well, certainly they'll be looking over the next few months to set their eyes on uh, Omaha, Nebraska and the final of the FEI Dressage World Cup next year. Just lost a little bit of the straightness there in that canter half pass see the pole just dropping slightly. Now we're coming into the changes. Often we've seen this horse with a bit of swinging, yeah. You can see swinging behind. You want to keep the straightness for the really high marks. They're so expressive and so big. 
it's just keeping them nice and parallel on that diagonal line. And then this is where you can see how able this horse is to really sit on the hind leg in those canter pirouettes. close behind on a couple of those one-time changes. Just lost a bit of activity there in that second canter pirouette. And that's, I guess, the overarching feel for me watching this test. Everything is improved over what we've been watching, but you just see those consistent moments where Hans Peter is really actually working hard, which does go against what we were talking about. And you can you can see so often that he's really just having to remind this uh, wonderful uh, dream boy, Glock's dream boy, just we're in a test environment here, we're not at home. Yeah, you, absolutely. You can't back off, you've got to keep going. And when you've got a horse with so much presence, so much power, so much expression, actually, it, it can be harder to control and harder to keep together. Um, and I think, you know, that's where we're seeing those little corrections being made. And sometimes when they are more exuberant, it shows up a little bit more. Well, coming down to wrap things up for the Netherlands, we've got, I'm sure, will be a new leading score here in the Grand Prix test. That is no question, but whether it will stay there through to the finish, there's an awful long way to go. Glock Dreamboy and uh, Hans Peter Minderhold for the Netherlands, certainly smiling. And it will just be interesting to see how that combination come back in the freestyle tomorrow, because again, we so often see, I mean, this might be one of those combinations that we can use it as an example today going into tomorrow. I think we'll score much higher up, not just the percentages, oh, they always improve their percentages, but will finish much higher. Yeah, I agree. Um, Hans Peter has a great ability to put well choreographed tests together in the freestyle. And of course, they are masters of music. And so it's always accompanied by beautiful music that really, really matches the horse. And so overall, artistically, they will score incredibly highly. And then it's just matching that with the technical marks. Well, the technical marks will be uh, through in a moment, of course. Today, the combination, of course, just to remind you at the moment, of course, we've got uh, two riders tied at the top as uh, this started out. And uh, it's a uh, mark for Caroline Chew and Richard Davison that were both equal, except Caroline just ahead on the technical marks. But uh, Hans Peter has indeed jumped to the top of the leaderboard clearly as well and consistently with a total mark of 73.447 percent inevitably there's always a small difference between the judges because they're all looking at things from a completely different angle and the one thing in this sport is if you watch it from one way it looks like that and if you look at it from another way it looks different yeah and that's what's so important is that we have those five judges and of course at championship level we have seven judges um, and it's so important that we do have them sitting around the arena because you know take a first initial center line for instance you're coming down the center line you halt at x unless it's really really unsquare the judge at c might not see whereas the judges at e and b and potentially h and m might see that whereas the judge at c is judging the straightness they're all looking for the individual things and that's why sometimes you can get completely different marks but actually it's still the same test that's why we like it when they have seven yes around the arena at some of the championships as well it, it, it's so integral the yeah, different angles the yeah, different ways of looking at things it's great to see this man here in london this is andrew gould and this is indie group and andrew one of the hardest working most talented riders in british dressage and he has worked tirelessly trained by david hunt for many many years and andrew regularly competing at uh, national championship level and uh, at the international events here in the UK. He's won numerous championships and uh, performing and producing horses all the way up to Grand Prix. 
what I hadn't realized is this is his five-star debut from what I can understand. And someone will correct me, I'm sure, if I'm wrong. But all I can do is go back and look. Wow. And for somebody with so much talent, it is fabulous to see him taking his chance here with this ride that, in fact, doesn't have a huge amount of international experience, but is well-developed and brilliantly produced. Had two fabulous wins at Kiso with this horse. This then the turn of the nine-year-old stallion by Negro. This is Indigo, the ride for Great Britain and Andrew Gould. So also the youngest horse in the class by a couple of years. So very, very new to this level, as you say. So again, this is going to be really about giving this horse confidence at this level. A little bit of tension there in the corner. You can just see a little bit of tightness better there towards the end. Just want to see him a little bit softer over the back into that extended trot, much better here down the short side. I think that little blip in the corner just made him a little bit nervous about giving his all in the extended cat, extended trot, sorry. Lovely positioning here in the trot half pass. Really nice around the rider's inside leg good crossing and again I think this horse has a lot of presence a lot of expression and actually Andrew's riding it really really tactfully and not pushing him too much he's allowing the horse to, to build that confidence up in the movements and then I'm sure tomorrow he can just ask for that a little bit more I think when the horses are this young and this inexperienced at this level, it's always better to come in and ride them a little bit cautiously and give them a really good experience because that's when they're really going to want to work with you. And look at that, Pia. Beautiful, nicely on the spot, a little bit tight again, but some gorgeous steps there. And again, that's just going to get better as he gets stronger. And that's what's so exciting about what I'm watching at the moment, because I'm seeing, like you're saying, Andrew, just he's really, he's riding the horse to sort of a 90% performance, because if he asks for 100%, he's likely to end up with lots of mistakes. Absolutely. And that you don't need. But that means there is so much more to come. Yeah. And he's only nine, so he would have probably only been working at this level for a couple of years as opposed to some of the horses that we've seen that are you know 16 18 even 14 you know like the last horse that this horse is still relatively new to this work and they do build up strength like we were saying earlier they do build up that that strength over the years to be able to perform these movements and this horse definitely has all of the talent there see the horse really listening to Andrew. Lovely and straight on that line of two time changes. And again, you can just see that there's going to be so much more there in those changes, so much more expression and ground cover and airtime. But again, he's just riding a little bit tentatively to enable this horse to have a really good time in the arena. And again, I'd like to see this horse a little bit more sitting in that canter pirouette. A bit of swinging here on the center line with the one-time changes. The horse just struggling a little bit more with that. Again, well tentatively ridden there by Andrew. Doing a great job of giving this horse a really nice experience in the arena. And I have a feeling we're going to see this partnership really, really come on in 2023. He 
definitely excels here in this PF dressage work. Just has a wonderful, wonderful hind leg. You can see is really able to sit and the hind leg's really able to come underneath him and that transition into the PF, beautifully smooth, keeping the regularity and keeping that same level of activity, which often we see drop off in the PF. He's really, really maintained that beautifully. And again, back into the passage. And this is where Andrew can just push a little bit more than in those canter pirouettes and the changes that he just struggled with a little bit more. Wow, what a fabulous performance from Andrew Gould and a nine-year-old, the nine-year-old uh, Indigo. So uh, congratulations to him. It'll be yet again, I think, a score that'll be knocking on the door, not maybe quite breaking the 70% barrier, but at nine, I think Andrew hopefully has a horse there, and hopefully it's a horse he can keep, because we know, you know all riders are in that position. You, you have to look at different aspects of the business as well but one that with the way that it can be up and massage i think yeah. wow that's exciting and i think what i mean we're nine now it's basically a 10 year old yeah so we can look ahead to next year and it'd be lovely to see them come back in 12 months time and then compare but i think you'd where aren't we saying earlier maybe he's riding at a 90 percent capacity i think you'd have all the confidence in the world just to let it go next time round and that would be brilliant to see. Definitely, 100%. And I think, you know, although he was maybe riding at 90% in the trot work, I think he was potentially riding at about 80 in the canter work because that was definitely where this horse is a little bit weaker. You can see how strong. And that's where you can see the difference in the PF from the first PF there, where he got a little bit tight in the back, a little bit tense through the neck. But then in the last PF on the center line, so much more relaxed. And that's where you can see the progression in that test. Even though it is the short Grand Prix, I think actually, again, for these young horses, although things come thick and fast in this test, it is shorter. And so you do wonder whether actually it does suit the younger horses because they don't have quite so much work. Well, there's your score, 69.553%. The uh, mark coming uh, from across our panel of five judges. And uh, that puts Andrew Gould in to fifth place at the moment. And when you consider how tight things are, he's in a, in a little grouping there where 0.4% is covering second down to Andrew in fifth. And that's very small mark differences. Absolutely. We saw that a lot at the World Championships this year. Um, you know, there was riders that were, were coming 40th and 60th, and they were all on like 68, 69%, which is phenomenal that the sport is that close. It is great to see. Absolutely, it is. And it's great to see everybody here enjoying London, having fun out there. Of course, all the Christmas shopping and all the razzmatazz that goes with this famous show. And I have to say, it's one thing not to be under the glass roof of Olympia, but in every other way, Excel exceeds expectations and is a phenomenal venue. It really, really does. I think Olympia was so special. However, this it, it just has everything that Olympia didn't have. You know, there's so much more space for shopping, which, you know, for me is very important. You know where you are this afternoon once this is done. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. But there's so much more of a bigger warm up as well. And that really, really suits the riders. And at Olympia, it was so small and so condensed. But here, they've got a full size arena back there. And it really, really is so much easier for the riders. Yeah, everybody used to love going to Olympia because it was Olympia and they accepted it was small and, 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 and we all loved it and, and in one respect the amusement is but it isn't in so many ways because this is such a uh, scopey venue and the organisers have just, they've left no stone unturned in ensuring from the horses and the riders and the public and except everybody has been thought of and uh, really placed central to try and bring together the magnificence of the London International National Horse Show. Well, let's move on because uh, we've still got two more to go in this half and then, of course, we'll take a short break before we uh, move on to uh, some of the, perhaps I could say, favourites here this afternoon, I think is the best way to put that. Is that fair? I would say that's fair. I think that's fair. Right, so Belgium and uh, 
of course, a bit of a change, in fact, who, who Belgium was sending um, this week. Mark uh, Peters Van is with us on this uh, 13-year-old yes. stallion. It's uh, by John. It's uh, called Elias. And this is a partnership that uh, come down the centre line next. Recently, were out in Samarin in the summer to finish in second place there in that part of the uh, World Cup series as well, scoring uh, 72.295 in the freestyle back in August. They were another combination, though. They certainly had a good few outings at five-star level. So we'll see what they can do here today in the Grand Prix. It's so great to see the variety of breeds that come forward for this sport. And I know that Mark has a particular affinity with these Dutch Frisians. Um, he's got a few to his bow. I've commentated on some with, uh, he's got a few others, I think two or three others at this level. And he really does such a great job with them, really, really picking up on their strengths but just such a beautiful, correct way of going as well. Good ground cover in the extended trot. And again, that can be a particular movement where these horses are, have a tendency to hurry. And Mark just really enabling him to have that half hold and to sit and to wait and to listen. Crossing really nicely uphill in the trot, half passes. And a lovely square halt. We're coming round now into the passage and the PF for the first time. Just trying to activate now in the passage, ready for the PR. Some nice steps there. A little bit of traveling, but actually again, and this is where the calculated risks come in again, because do you ask for the horse to be more on the spot and actually risk losing all of your activity? Or do you accept that the horse is going to travel a little bit in the PF, but actually you can maintain the fluency and the activity and the rhythm? And I know which one I would definitely go for. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, that's something you learn through hours and hours <laughs> and hours of practice at home. Absolutely. And then you know exactly what you're going to do when that feeling comes in the ring like to have seen a bit more relaxation in the collected walk. Keeping good alignment here in the canter half pass. straight just lost a bit of the bend there through the body in that final half pass and again coming beautifully straight on that diagonal line have just seen a little bit more activity for the higher marks on that line of two time changes. Nicely centered there in the canter pirouette. straight again in the one time changes down the centre line and again preparing there for the canter pirouette asking for that inside bend and again beautifully centred there really nice and active around the canter pirouette maintaining that good rhythm and fabulous ground cover in the extended canter 
could have just maintained it for the whole diagonal. I felt like he brought him back and half halted him a little bit too soon before he returned at P there. down towards the end. I think the only problem they've really been uh, marked down for in the test when we saw things drop was in those flying changes the one times. And again, that's why you need all the judges, because I didn't spot that from the angle that I was at, so, uh, and neither did one of the other judges. Beautiful looking combination. As you said at the start, it is a testament to the sport how and the riders as well how they can produce so many different breeds that are still all able to uh, perform these uh, marvelous movements within the Grand Prix test. And uh, that is a band that has certainly enjoyed being able to uh, use these uh, Dutch regions and certainly show them off to the world and show the people just how good they can be. So, uh, Mark Petersman and Elias there for Belgium. Yeah, he says he loves the character of Frisian horses and he says that they'll do anything for you within their power and they love contact with people. And I think that really shone through in their test today. They have such a strong partnership together. The horse really, really showed that he wanted to do his best for his rider. Certainly lots to like. Not sure exactly where it's going to fall in terms of uh, final marks for that partnership. But I will look forward to seeing them uh, express themselves tomorrow in the freestyle. Definitely. I have to say, freestyle is always my favourite. I just love to see, I find it so interesting to see how the riders choreograph their tests, and I love good music. So, get your boot fighting. <laughs> Dancing uh, under the uh, lights of XL tomorrow night, of course. If you are going to join us and follow us, we will be here for the uh, FEI Dressage World Cup, the points paying round, the freestyle here tomorrow night. Well, there's the lineup of marks for Mark and uh, Elias across the panel of five. It is a total percentage mark of 68.421, and that moves them into sixth place. It ensures Hans Peter Mitterhold and Glock's Dream Boy NOP are still leading the way. The only combination so far to go through that 70% barrier. But we have plenty more to enjoy. One more to go before we get to the break. You can see, in fact, the uh, pictures there showing you that fabulous big warm-up out the back. And you can get really close here in London as well, watching the horses and the riders working, which is sometimes as entertaining and as enjoyable as watching the tests. It is. It's so interesting to see how the riders warm up for this test. And, uh, yeah, that is all to see here in the warm-up. And there's a champagne bar there, too. We'll uh, find out more about that after the broadcast. Meanwhile, it's Ireland and uh, Geraldo, and this is uh, Abigail Lyle Abby here with the 11-year-old gelding by uh, Harmonies and Asu that took her to the World Championships this year. They competed at Harbury back in the summer, putting in a uh, personal best performance in the Grand Prix. But from what I can see, looking at, at some of the information with this horse, Tomorrow will be their first freestyle FEI. Interesting, yeah, because they did the Grand Prix at the World Championships. So, and they've probably always opted to do the special, so. Just looking back at the exciting. history. So, uh, yeah, it'd be fascinating to uh, see them because Abby and this horse has certainly been able to uh, push themselves forward in the sport. This beautiful 11 year old Geraldo for Abby Lyle. I know Abby was so excited to get the invite to compete here. I mean, it is a pretty exciting invite to get, right? Right, absolutely. Lovely steps there in the extended trot. Tracking up beautifully. Could just have extended the frame a little bit more. 
I know recently she's relocated as well. She was up north, was she even in Scotland? And she's relocated to come down and be closer to her trainer, Carl Hester. corrected into a square hole though and good steps in the rain back shows fast thinking as well when things are not quite working out but you can correct it into yeah. something that is certain yeah you've got to cover the mistakes as best you can sometimes absolutely and and you know she'll be able to feel whether it's square or not and just make that quick correction but it has got to be a quick again we saw a little bit of traveling there in the PF and that was to enable her to keep that activity lovely smooth transitions there very well ridden and again a younger horse just 11 years old so again plenty of time in the future for this horse Somebody striding out across the arena yes very active in the <laughs> extended walk I'd like to see more relaxation more stretch in the extended walk He's definitely keen to get going into the canter. Okay, we can and certainly see all that energy bobbling away in the collected walk now as well. Yeah, absolutely. And then that obviously it does affect the level of ground cover that they're getting. And you often find that with these Grand Prix horses. You know, once you start working on the PF and the passage, the, the thing that is most likely to go is the walk, you know, the quality of the walk that they would have. However, very rarely you do find horses with incredible walks that are still able to maintain the level of performance in the PF and the passage, but also have that huge ground cover in the walk work as well. But it's again, that fine line want the horses nice and hot and oh a little mistake there at the end of the twos you want the horses nice and hot to be able to perform these movements you want them listening you want them off the aids and you know a little bit that comes with having that anticipation and that heat you can get a little bit of tension creeping in especially in the walk because they just are eager and so super keen to to do the work they you know find the walk almost a little bit boring lovely expressive one-time changes so you want to see those cans of pirouettes on a dustbin lid six to eight steps but their hind leg has got to go in a small circle roughly the size of a dustbin lid that's a great way to look at it if you're getting really really tight you can go on a dinner plate <laughs> Is that the difference between a seven and a nine? Maybe a ten. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely rhythm here in the trot. Um, can she maintain that? That PF just looking a little bit more like hard work for Abby. You can see her legs tapping away to encouraging him to keep that activity in the PF. Lovely here in the passage. And all round, a very nice <laughs> test from Abigail Lal for Ireland. And, and it could well be the second score over 70 percent and see her up there in second place because with the exception of that mistake at the end of the two times and perhaps a little bit of tension in the walk everything else looked pretty good to me do you know what i think the sigh of relief when she halted said it all and that big smile i'm not sure that smile can get any bigger absolutely fantastic to see abby out on the world cup circuit it is. There'll be a lot of uh, 
own friends and family that will have made the journey down here to Excel in London to ensure she's got plenty of support and uh, Carl Hester, her trainer, is there keeping an eye on her and she comes out and already she's in sort of disbelief as she looks back because in the arena the scores have already begun to come through as we get a little look at uh, some of the highlights. So her World Cup debut for Abigail Lyle. Of course, Hans and Peter Minderhold is holding on to the top spot at the moment, but he is the only score to have gone through that 70% barrier, and currently, therefore, leading the way on 73.447. And, sorry, Gareth. No, go on. That, that score is perfectly achievable for Abby. I think if she didn't have the mistake, like you said, in the end of the two time changes, and once she can get that P app a little bit more established, she's going to be on some really high marks. Certainly is. Just waiting for confirmation of the score. And that is what this sport is all about. I don't think she can believe what she's done, can she? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Because and there's Carl, Richard Davidson down there as well. You know. Such lovely pictures of these two. Oh, it is. Well, that is why there are smiles and tears. Because she has got into second place. And I think if he'd said to her 70.395 at breakfast this morning, then uh, I think she'd have bitten your arm off at the thought of breaking the 70% barrier on her debut in London. Absolutely. Well, bearing in mind, she got 65.714 in the Grand Prix at Herning at the World Championships. So that's a huge increase in just a couple of months. Certainly is. The move is obviously paying dividends. It obviously is. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Well, that, of course, as well, takes us up to the halfway point as things currently stand here in the FBI Dressage World Cup. I've been getting so excited, I was just waiting for the next doors to come. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, uh, as you can see, we can look out the back into the warm-up arena, champagne bar on the left, but this massive warm-up arena. And uh, still to come, the likes of uh, Simone Pers, Ingrid Klimke, Gareth Hughes, uh, Neymar Morele Livretta. We've got Helen Lannan Hannenberger, Morgan Barbachton, and the world champion, Lottie Fry. All still putting the final touches or early touches to their warm up, but that is the order of the moment. Hans Peter Minderhold leads Glock Streams Boy, has put the Dutch in charge, 73 447, ahead of Abby Lyle and Geraldo for Ireland. 70.395 and Caroline Chu, you have to say sort of full marks to her with Viviani to uh, sit there in third at the break. I think she'd be extremely happy with that. Some really good performances. Andrew Gould there in sixth as well with that uh, nine year old, the youngest horse in the class. I mean, Richard Davison could have been higher, but he had that little error at the start, a judgment call from him as to whether he started at that point or he didn't. But and Peter Minderhard and Glockstream Boy have certainly said, right, catch us up and overtake us in the second half. Who are you most excited to see? I mean, would it be cliche to say Charlotte Fry and Glamourdale? <laughs> well, their first outing on the FEI Dressage World Cup circuit this year. And of course, tomorrow in the freestyle, they'll uh, a target, I guess, because we're all going to start looking back at Leon and, uh, of course, Jessica's score. And that is the matchup that everyone wants come Omaha. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I cannot wait for that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's the two combinations that have sort of avoided themselves. Not deliberately, it's just circumstance. Jessica, yeah. obviously, congratulations, as we've said many times, on her uh, new arrival. And uh, nevertheless, it means that we've got lots to look forward to. So many stories going forward, but here as well today. I have a feeling, oh, they can see up on the screen there, we're uh, just hearing outside from Abby Lyle. I don't know if we go quiet, if we can pick up a little bit of that.
Jackson will be 12 next year, and he's so fit. And you know, I'm, I, yeah, he gets a bit tight, like why wouldn't he? But I finish every test feeling like he can go again. You know, he and he wants to do it, and I'm just so incredibly lucky. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, and thanks to everybody for all the traffic and support. <laughs> So what a competition underway and uh, underway with this FBI Dressage Show World Cup, of course, part of the Western European League. Four leagues make uh, this uh, series truly global. It provides athletes from all around the world with an opportunity to qualify for the final, which takes place in Omaha, Nebraska in the USA in April in 2023. As one of the most prestigious series on the international dressage calendar. It's with uh, great anticipation we watch the season's qualifiers unfold already halfway through the unwrapping the packaging again here in London and reveal to whom the doors to the final will be open. The FBI would like to wish every athlete competing here the best of luck and of course encouraging all of you to get involved in the scoring on the FBI E-League by downloading the Spectator Judging app. But good to see some uh, great participation so far in that Spectator Judging as well. So thank you to all of you and hopefully you win some great prizes as a part of that too. So just uh, a few minutes away from getting into uh, our next stage as we take a little breather before uh, our next up at uh, 15.52, next of those. But in the meantime, I think we've actually managed to uh, talk to Louise Bell. So let's hear what Louise had to say.
there was no Africa, Asia, Americas, or Europe. Just one big supercontinent. Pangea. Today, there is still a force connecting those divided by distance. Reversing means of years of grieving. Making far feel close. Bringing there to here. Turkish Airlines. Well, our thanks to our sponsors throughout the week here for the London International Horse Show. An exciting second half coming up as well. Already with news being made from that had to be the window there at Glock's uh, Dreamwide 73447. We go to Canada, we go to Simone Pierce in Australia, hosting World Championship riders, Stuttgart winner Ingrid Klimka in the field. Of course, some best known too for being the young European champion and medalist in the eventing as well. Great friends, Gareth Hughes, Germany's star as well in uh, Helen Lager Hagerberg. Of course, uh, Great Britain's world champion with uh, Charlotte Fry and uh, also another Olympic rider who Francis uh, Morgan Barbas on second in the World Cup standings right now with uh, Valero. So a stacked group coming up in our second half and uh, as I say, remember you can get involved with spectator judging too to uh, judge along and see how you compare to uh, our official set of judges. So our judges, uh, Ruby and Sumi, their position, Judge E for Great Britain, Peter Storr, Judge H, uh, Magnus Sir Rigmark of Sweden, Judge C, Susan Barra of Denmark, Stephen Clark of uh, Great Britain and M, and Judge B, Jacques Van Dahl of Belgium. <laughs> Well, welcome back. Just a few more minutes and then we will be back underway with this Grand Prix test here in London. It is the next part of the Western European League. Tomorrow, freestyle action. Today, the short Grand Prix. And some big names in the sport are coming our way. Yeah, Natasha Baker alongside me, Gareth Jenkins, in the commentary box. And a summary so far. It's been tight, hasn't it? There's, there's a lot of riders on very, very close scores. We saw an outstanding test from Abigail Lyle, which was just brilliant. She was so happy to be here. Broke the 70% barrier, which was fabulous. And of course, in the lead, we have Hans Peter Minderhund and the lovely Glock Stream Boy, which did a really nice test. And it's so great to see them back in the whiteboard. So, yes, first half down, very exciting second half to go. Well, the doors open, the doors closed. That famous London logo is uh, behind this combination for Canada. The uh, ride is for Neymar, Neymar, Moriria, Lebretta, riding uh, statesman. A combination that we, in fact, saw on the Western European League last time out in Madrid just a few weeks back. And uh, they scored 68 8 for it that day, although it was the full Grand Prix test. It is 15 year old by Sandra Hitt, and Statesman has certainly been a ride that has uh, taken this uh, young lady right the way to the top, including the World Championships this year, travelling reserve to Tokyo in the past. And of course, she's picked up some very impressive youth medals coming through the ranks in North America. Yes, a very, very exciting rider for the future. It's great to see her here in Europe for the World Cup Western European League. I 
think she bases herself over here for some of the time and then also in Wellington in Florida. So she likes to keep herself spread around a bit. But that's great because, you know, I think in America, you know, they can get very stuck with the same competitors. And when you come over to Europe, it's great to put yourself in amongst some of the best riders in the world. The one thing the Western European League has is... Oh, hang on a moment. Oh, she's gone wrong. Well, I think difficult she's... moments down there. She's just talking to the judges. So, well, of course, bring you a little bit more communication in a moment when we understand ourselves. At the moment, she's still smiling, but I guess we just await to see how things evolve because I get the feeling she'll continue on and re well, come back to that point where she went wrong and... Here we go, back underway again. Fun fact as well, did you know that her dad was the co-founder of Cirque du Soleil? I did not. There you go. Lovely steps there in the extended trot. This horse very, very expressive and so naturally, beautifully built uphill. Good positioning here in the trot half passes. Ooh. Again, just needed to keep that body alignment underneath her in that changeover. And again, there we can see the, the half pass to the right I would say not quite as good as the half pass to the left. I'd like to see a little bit more engagement from the hind leg and the horse just a little bit more bend through the body in that direction. Nice activity here in the passage. in the PF, just got to be careful of that rhythm. Yeah, well ridden there. Just could have done with a little bit more activity in the hind leg. Big fan of this music. I know the riders aren't using it, but I love a bit of Frozen. Well done, Marcus. You've made Tash very happy. <laughs> Again, just lacking a little bit of activity there in the extended walk. Want to see more of a march. I always think with the extended walk, you want to have the horse as if it's going out for a hack on a nice, relaxed frame and body position, but also really, really marching and wanting to go out. the shoulder there in the one-time changes. Again, I'd like to see more energy down this whole centre line in the first canter pirouette here in the second canter pirouette. Nicely centred, but again, it's, it's those calculated risks that we were talking about earlier. Do you make them small and risk losing a bit of the activity or make them slightly bigger and keep that punch in the canter? 
Certainly a horse that's got a huge amount of energy in there. I think she just does need to perhaps slide off a gear or two and just let that expression come through a little bit more throughout the test. And I think she'll come back and, and be able to deliver that tomorrow. And, you know, maybe she, again, she's just riding on 90% and tomorrow she can come out and give 100. Lovely here in the PR, but again, nicely active there. I would say this one slightly better than the first PR. Smooth transitions there. Again, we've got to remember this rider's age. You know, she's a lot, lot younger than a lot of the other competitors. And although she's done these youth championships, we've got Olympians and European riders and world championship riders in here. Well, I was going to say at the start, when the bell went, we'll come back to the bell in a minute. But the, what the Western European League is, is it's a regular recurrence of the top riders in the world. Now, you're not always going to have every rider at every round. That doesn't quite work. But you always have a selection of the top riders at every round. And therefore, someone, you know, like Neymar here, you come over and you, you go to three or four or five shows over the course of the season. You're pitching your standard right at the top yeah. every single time you go down that centre line. And your, your marks are comparable with the best in the business and therefore you're always going to improve from it. Absolutely. And I think that's so good to be able to do that, to put yourself amongst the best in the world. And, you know, I started competing internationally when I was 16 and I was up against Paralympic champions and world champions. And you know, I started off being 10% behind and then you just slowly creep closer and then you overtake them, hopefully. And uh, and that's what the sport is all about. And that's what progression is all about. And actually, it's one of the unique facets of horse sport is that you can start actually competing against yourself or top riders at a level which is right for you. But that can start very early. And that doesn't always happen in a lot of big international sports and, and disciplines. I'm not completely convinced I understand why the bell rang at the beginning. No, I'm not. And because I don't understand it, I'm not going to surmise, I'm not going to guess. I will find out later and hopefully somebody will tell me. Yeah, I'm hoping so because she didn't turn the wrong way. Um, and yeah, I obviously there was no lameness because she was allowed to carry on. So who knows? What I do know and what you now know is there is the score. 68.895 is the score for Neymar, Mariana, Libretta and Statesman for Canada. Canada, another of this phenomenal 10 nation lineup that has uh, come to London this week to be part of the London International Horse Show. Well, plenty more to go. That just gets us back underway. Now we're off to Australia and another rider, horse rider combination that we've already seen on the World Cup circuit this year. We uh, saw them competing together in Stuttgart, but of course we also saw them to, uh, well, yeah, Stuttgart played for the freestyle of the Grand Prix. It is Simone Pierce and uh, Peter Dance. I was thinking as well of her lovely ride, Destano, that's been a championship horse. And now this one's just coming up on the rails, I think is a way to put it. Yeah, and it's great to give these younger horses the experience and the exposure at these competitions new ride this year and of course at the world championships she did qualify through from the grand prix to compete in the special and we'll be looking to put another big help in the points on the board on that western european league tomorrow with feeder dance then for simone pierce with the 13 year old by feeder tans two Very, very expressive horse. Huge amounts of ground cover here in the trot work. Tracking up nicely in the extended trot. Again, another horse really built so naturally uphill. Life 
drive so much easier when they're naturally uphill and have that pole up just got to watch that the tightness doesn't creep in over the back and that's when you can see the neck get a little bit shorter lovely transition to holes there right on the barker as well because absolutely sometimes you don't quite see them a little bit in front a little bit behind and that loses you another month it does and it frustrates me so much because it's you know a mark that is so easy to pick up just by being accurate She's putting together a Grand Prix test at the moment that is certainly above her average with Vida Dance. And at the moment, if she can keep this level of performance together, it's going to run our current leader very close. Again, we'd just like to see a little bit more relaxation here in the walk work to hopefully improve that level of ground cover. just see a little bit more softness over the back you can just see struggling a little bit on that penultimate flying change again this horse with so much expression so ooh, oh dear that's a real pity and it'll come against her heavily with the marks just that very sort of out the blue moment it wasn't something you could see coming no not particularly it got a little bit tense as the twos went on but actually that was a little bit of an overreaction It'll be interesting to see now what happens in these ones bizarrely the only advantage of it happening in the twos over the ones is it's not a double mark yes yeah and again you can just see that she just rode those a little bit tentatively after that blip in the two time changes being reduced because of that mistake still very tight between herself and Hans Peter what can she do on this final centre line she needs to go big and bring it all together better transition into the pier in there just sitting a little bit behind and of course the general impression mark will have reduced as well because of that error the face almost says disappointment but what she should hopefully feel very shortly is great pride in her performance because that, in my mind, and I know it's short test versus long test, was a massive improvement over where we were in Stuttgart a month ago. And if it hadn't been for that one little glitch, yeah. I have a feeling, well, I'm not sure. I think that'll stop her taking the lead. The thing is, as riders, we're all perfectionists and we want the perfect test in the arena. And of course, when something like that happens, it is very, very frustrating, but you do need to come out of it and take away the positives. And there was plenty of positives in that test. 
and with plenty more to go as well. There was a, a couple of times just where he got a little bit tight over the back and he lost a little bit of the suppleness and the submission, especially in those half passes. And I think, you know, there there is definitely room where she can creep up and, and I'm sure she'll be on the mid 70s in no time. Well, we'll wait to find out in a moment exactly what the judges do think today. I think this is the this is the bit that went wrong. This is where the horse just suddenly came back at her. So we're in the two time changes. So yeah, he changed together behind. So he actually did make a mistake and it's almost as if he then overreacted to him making a mistake. Um, and that's when the resistance came in. Well, disappointing because it has an impact, no doubt about it. But the moment, remember, the leading score is 73.447%. Abby Lyle sitting in second of the other score over 70% on 70.395. The Pia from Passage all complete. We, I think we can bring the score up. Here it is. And it is into second. 72.632. There was a lot of good in that test. And look, a very, very consistent from all of the judges, which is lovely to see. So they're obviously seeing the same thing from all the way around the arena. And I think as a rider, getting five percentages that are very, very close is always a good thing. So it means that Hans that still leads for now. It's currently the Netherlands, Australia and Ireland, but we still have five to go. And now to the lady for Germany that blew all of them away in Stuttgart with this quite simply stunning ride. It is Franciscus FRH, the 14 year old stallion for one of the greatest all round athletes in equestrian sport. She is a lady that has won gold at European, world and Olympic level in eventing. And this year made her debut in the team competition at the World Championships for Germany in dressage. She is a complete rider. She is Ingrid Klimka for Germany. Franziskus FRH. And one of the loveliest ladies in our sport as well. She is just the kindest person, always happy and just such a real pleasure to be around. And I think that really shows in her horse's way of going as well. This horse I was blown away with at Stuttgart and, and actually at the World Championships, just so beautifully soft. And you can see there that extended canter, just be, sorry, extended canter, extended trot, I'm getting carried away. Extended trot across the diagonal, so beautifully forward, so beautifully open in the frame. And this frame just doesn't change throughout the test and beautifully soft over the back. And, and therefore it's hard not to give the eights and the nines because he just, they just work together so, so well. And the early scores say the eights are there because uh, at 78.3 as an overall average at the moment, they would need to be. Pretty nice hold there and step early. Don't be I'm picky. Being fussy. Don't be picky. <laughs> <laughs> Just lost the fluency in the last step of the rain back and that transition coming back into the trot. And this passage is beautiful. Struggled a little bit more in, yes, in the pier in Stuttgart. Yeah, and in Stuttgart, she, of course, didn't come out on top in the Grand Prix. No, she didn't. That, of course got turned over in the freestyle. This is about in the Grand Prix. Also, this horse's walk isn't its strongest pace. You can just about see an over track better towards the beginning of the extended walk. There just needs to be super careful of the rhythm in this collected walk. Actually, that does look better than it did in Stuttgart. And again, that frame just so beautifully soft. And this is where you can see how 
amenable this horse is, the, the changes of bend are just so effortless. Really, really lovely and supple through the changes there on the half past zigzag. And again, beautifully expressive, so much airtime in these two time changes. You know, you say that to me, it reminds me of a glider. One, yeah. because of the airtime, but it's the serenity and that, that peaceful, just floating, uninterrupted nature yeah. of what movement is coming in front of you. Wait till Glamourdale, his twos and his ones are oh, gorgeous. <laughs> and again, this horse is just so well matched with the hind leg and the foreleg. And this is what effortless riding is about. His ability to really sit and collect in those highly collective movements, such as the canter pirouettes. And Ingrid just doesn't throw any marks away. And again, enormous amounts of ground cover there in the extended canter. down the final centre line now. Can't wait to see what this final PF has to bring. Definitely enough so far to go into the lead. She's definitely been working on that. That's a lot more active than he was back in Stuttgart. Fabulous, fabulous job, and another square hole to finish it off. She is so correct. She performs. She is so correct in every single aid that she gives. But you never see a single aid being given. And that's the art of dressage. And I think, you know, coming from eventing dressage into the world of pure dressage, I think the the riders in the eventing dressage, obviously there's a, a lot less in the test. It's more like an advanced medium test. And for a rider that is used to riding at a higher level, therefore that's when the the things like the, you know, being correct, being accurate, it really, really matters. And she's brought that forward into the world of dressage. And when you see her present a test, she presents it so beautifully. She doesn't throw away any marks. She sets up the movements in the corners. She prepares for her transitions. And, you know, that's what dressage is all about. And I think a lot of people could learn a lot from this lady. Throughout that test, the only place on the breakdown, which I understand where she has got that one little mistake, which was uh, occurring in the uh, one-time changes, there was one too many. Yes, okay. One or two too many. Of course, you've got the 11, and that, yes. that's the only place where you can see a dip in the mark. It's, it's a tiny thing, comparatively, because we know that that was a far improved performance from what we saw. And the mark says it is from what we saw, of course, in Stuttgart. That is a combination that continued to get better and better. Ingrid Klimka, Francesca's FRH, personal best in the short test, 75 421. And totally deserving. That was beautiful, beautiful to watch. The lightness. And I think the thing that I love most about that horse is its frame. It's just so soft. Um, it looks a joy to ride. Well, it was a joy to behold, and at the moment it puts Ingrid out in front here in London. So the lead has adjusted as she just goes just to work the horse down as much as you've got to work them in, you've got to work them down as well. Absolutely. It would be like running a marathon and then just stopping and collapsing. You know, you need to warm down as well to preserve those muscles for your next marathon. If I run a marathon, I would collapse. Yeah, I think I would too. <laughs> so, there you go. Right. Meanwhile, we are down to four. So, there are two left to go for Great Britain. There is one to go for Germany and one to go for France. 
The next up, though, is the reigning national champion of Great Britain. His name, of course, is Gareth Hughes. And of all his achievements this year, I think that one actually was quite special to him because it's one that he'd be knocking on the door. He had every every chance, and it had always somehow eluded him. And then this year at uh, Summerford, he, he lifted that title. But it isn't just that. It's a man that has just constantly trained and developed some wonderful horses through to Grand Prix. And he has become such an integral part of the British team and such a team player. Yeah. You know, Tokyo last year, he went as the travelling reserve. He didn't get to compete, but he was every bit a part of that team. Of course, then he got the chance of the Europeans, and he was part of that team. But this year, when they needed his score... He delivered. ...in Herning, that came together. Didn't it just? It was absolutely wonderful. And do you know what? He, I know he was incredibly disappointed after his first test at the World Championships because what, what happened, if you didn't watch, is that the crowd got so into it that they clapped their way down the centre line. And this mare just got very, very hot. He didn't get a final halt at all, yet he still delivered and it was still enough to put Great Britain into silver medal position. Gareth Hughes, and this is, of course, classic Brialinka. And this is a ride, of course, from the championships in Herning this year, that by the time he'd finished, he'd found his way to fifth in the world in the freestyle. Yeah, I don't think he can still believe that. It was such a wonderful test. And, you know, this mare is is actually fairly ordinary. You know, she's not a, a massive mover, but he gets the absolute most out of every single horse that he rides. And you're, you're right in what you said, Gareth. He is an absolute master. And he rode so beautifully out of the World Championships. And he, he did not throw a single mark away. And, you know, he's doing the same again here. And you can see that lightness. You can see that elegance of this mare. And it's just so correct in the way of going that it's impossible to mark down. Well, at the moment, it certainly looks to be a very good start. Ooh, curse of the commentator moment. <laughs> yeah, that was a definite curse there. But again, you know, we know this mare struggles with her halts. She just wants to keep going, and you know, I, I have a mare like that. Um, and uh, you know, when they're so eager to work, to get them to halt can actually be the hardest thing because they just want to keep going the whole time. And again, you can see that she's not the biggest mare there in the in the way of going in the PF, but keeping that regularity, keeping that straightness in the PF, and I'm sure she picked up some pretty good marks for that. I was going to say, that PF again, like when Hans Peter came in, we said we saw a step change. And again, you're seeing that here with yeah. Gareth. Just needing to watch the rhythm here in the walk. Preparing for the canter, nicely ridden. And I think that's the difference actually between Hans Peter um, and Dream Boy and Brolinka. Brolinka is, I think, from seeing both of them over the years, Brolinka's a much hotter mare. And so Gareth has to really, really ride her carefully and tentatively. Um, whereas Dream Boy, I think, is almost the other way. And, and he, um, Hans Peter has to really ride him. Not saying that he's lazy, he's absolutely not lazy, but he really needs to ride him forward to get that power and that expression um, that he does get so beautifully. And that's again where you just have to change your riding style for the horses that you're riding. An exceptionally strong average. You can see it in the corner. And this mare just does every movement so correctly and so well. 
pirouette was beautiful. Now to the second of those. Just so beautifully balanced it in all of her work. And again, beautifully balanced. That's a dinner plate. Absolutely. And that, of course, is one of the big lines in terms of scores, because it's double collective all the way down there. And a really hard line to ride. And you can just see Gareth taking his time, giving the mare time to be able to, to do everything to her best. And again, you can see that she really, really wants to work with her rider. They are in such great harmony together. Beautifully soft. Nicely ridden there, smooth transitions. Very, very well ridden. And again, I feel like Gareth's sitting on 98% riding. He's going for 100% tomorrow. Gareth Hughes proves once again here in London that he is every bit as good as any other rider in the world. And with that horse, Masinka Brilinka is every chance of a podium here tomorrow in London. Oh, without a doubt, a, a real, real talent. And like I said, you know, not the biggest moving, not the most expressive horse that we've seen so far today, but just so correct in every single element of the test. And like you said, that, that line with the canter pirouettes and the one-time changes, just so beautifully ridden. Yeah, that was a real standout moment yeah. in that test. And you can see the average just constantly well, moving well, up as well with those scores, uh, double scores. So, of course, there is still some very strong horse and rider combinations to come in this. But we've already seen, you know, one exceptional combination in Ingrid Klinka a moment ago with Francisca. That's going to beat Ingrid. Yes. And that is so rewarding for Gareth with all the hard work. Because all of you in this sport, you don't get anywhere without hard work. Oh, gosh, no. Absolutely. Even Christmas Day, birthdays, every day of the year, 365 days, 24-7, our horses are top priority. And, uh, yeah. And that's a horse, of course, that alongside... Uh, wife Rebecca, daughter Ruby, and Julia Hornick, who's been a, a fabulous supporter of Gareth over the years, come together with a score of 78.263%. I know it's the short test, but you don't often announce 78% in a Grand Prix. No, it's fantastic to be able to witness that. And we've been so lucky, haven't we? I mean, it's 78 to 75, and with still three top competitors to come, I think we could see an 80, potentially. We will keep our fingers crossed, as we can see. I think that was a pony called Glamadel just cantering across in the warm-up there. And uh, there are, though, one Germany, Great Britain, and France. And all three of these next jockeys have uh, brought their uh, top rides. Gareth Hughes, Classic Borussia, 78 263 leads the way. Ingrid Klimka, 75 421 sits in second. And uh, Hans Peter Minderhold, 73 447 is currently in third. So actually at the World Championships in the Grand Prix, obviously that was the long format Grand Prix at the World Championships, and this is short, uh, he scored 75.978, so again, great to see an improvement over the last few months. It is, and that's, a, that's like perhaps the consistent story of the day, because Gareth, again, yes, people all go, but it's the short test of this difference, and we, we respect that, but improvement with Gareth, improvement with Ingrid, we haven't seen Hans and Glocks 
uh, Dreamboy for quite a while, so no, that's a little bit of an exception. Simone and Fiedadant's improvement yeah. from what we saw in Stuttgart. And then you look at Abby Lyle. I mean, a whopping improvement. <laughs> wow. So, you know, and, and I get that, that is, I guess, the takeaway in a lot of respects. And I wonder how it'll uh, work through with this combination that go next, because it's another lady who has again got such experience in this sport because it's the turn of Helen Lana Hanneberger. She, of course, is a team gold medalist. Uh, she's an individual medalist from uh, World Championships. She, of course, has uh, individual bronze at the Olympics here in London in 2012. But that all came on the wonderful Damon Hill in RW. Now with Annabelle, this 14-year-old mare that uh, competed both in Madrid, where she finished second in the freestyle, and in Willemsborg, where, of course, she was in the top six. So, again, has sort of been improving. But what will today bring? Now, we do have actually a comparison, because in Willemsborg, they did the short test. They did. And that score, 72-474. And then she went to Madrid in the long test and scored 72. So very consistent. She's another rider again that tends to do fairly well in the Grand Prix, like you say, 72%, but then really, really ups the game for the And just playing with the bit throughout the test so far would just like to see her a little bit more relaxed in the mouth and in the contact losing the rhythm there in the walk you could just see her losing the straightness as well
noted the same with the commentator's curse because she wrote a beautiful first pirouette and then the second one was just a little bit large. Certainly at the moment looking like finding a way into the top three. See as the test is going on, just becoming much more settled in the mouth. Helen Langen Hannenberger, and that is Annabelle. So we will see exactly where that fits into the mix. And tough competition today, perhaps tougher than she was up against. You know, it was a bit her and uh, Frederick in Madrid. Yeah. Today, there's a few more circling. Yeah, I mean, she had tough competition in Wilhelmsburg in Denmark at the beginning of the World Cup season. And, you know, all of the big guns were there. We have pretty much the whole of the Danish team uh, vying for the top spot. And did they finish first, second, third and fourth? Uh, they finished first, second and third. There you go. <laughs> I knew there was something in there. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, at the moment, Gareth Hughes is leading in London with two to go. Ingrid Klumka sitting second as we get to have a little look back as we await the scores for Helen uh, Lannan Hannenberg and Annabelle, the 14 year old mare by Contour. She's had some lovely horses, the likes of uh, Annabelle now, but in the past, as we mentioned, Damon Hill. And then you had Damsey FRH as well. These two, actually, that we're watching at the moment, Annabelle, was her World Cup final ride in Leipzig this year. Yeah. She was top six. She was. I will never forget, it's one of my favourite moments in dressage, it was not Leipzig, it was the one before, and she was riding Damsey, and he basically in the freestyle got totally excited and took off flat out down the centre line, it was brilliant. Well, how excited Helen will be with that score, we will have to find out, but 74.816% is the mark. And actually, I think she should be quite pleased because that is a big step up from Willemsborg. Again, 2% higher and very consistent from all five judges there, so very positive. So again, it fits that narrative of uh, how riders, the more into the season we're getting, are getting that chance to be able to progress, to be able to push the scores that little bit higher. Well, when it came to the World Championships this year, there was nobody that could push the scores higher than this lady. She is, of course, the world champion in the world of dressage. She is a double world champion, both in special and the freestyle, where she smashed through the 90% barrier. Of course, with the uh, magnificent Glamourdale from the Van Horst uh, Horses team, Lottie Fry. Great Britain, back on home soil for the first time since winning the World Championships. Of course, Lottie, who is based with the Van Alst out in the Netherlands. Such a special horse, and we are so lucky to be able to witness this here. For everybody that couldn't make it out to the World Championships, that want to support her. It's great that she's made the effort to come over and bring this horse to compete here. And he's only 11. I think that's the other thing we forget. You know, he, he is just 11 years old. He is going to be young enough to go to Paris. And that will be an interesting one course she rode Everdale on the team in Tokyo. I mean this year she rode Dark Legend at the World Cup final. She's got the most amazing horses around her. But this is the one that has certainly 
taken things to a new level for Charlotte Fry. And right now, in this test, is taking the scores to a whole new level. Yeah, just the, the ease. I mean, even there, just going into a beautiful square halt. This horse is so beautifully balanced. And this is when dressage is made to look easy. This horse just takes absolutely everything in his stride. Beautiful. It doesn't get much more on the spot than that, does it? <laughs> certainly doesn't. Have we had any tens yet? One. But as you can tell from that average mark, there's a lot of nines. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's some tens to come in those changes. Again, the walk, not the strongest point for this horse. Careful here with the rhythm. Beautiful transition up into the canter. It's nice for Lottie to be able to come into this kind of arena and to be able to really ride him. And you could see in there, she was actually correcting little mistakes that he was about to make. And you could really see her, her really riding him. And I know that sounds a really silly comment to make, but sometimes when you come into test, you just have to accept what you get. But she's asking him of more questions. She's challenging him through some of the movements, which is really great to see. And, you know, that's part of these horses' education. And she needs to be able to come into this kind of environment and be able to push him to get more tens in more of the movements. Another 10. is just something else. Now for the final centre line. Again, just asking him those questions, keeping him really, really active. You could see that he went to back off one step and she was quickly there with the leg aid to say, no, 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 come on, I want more from you. Sometimes the pictures do the talking. On this occasion, that is exactly what we've just witnessed because we were privileged to see Charlotte Fry, the reigning FBI dressage world champion and her championship ride, Glamourdale, back in action. And, well, that's gone straight through 80% because there's <laughs> no way that's falling any lower. No, that was quite spectacular, wasn't it? And, and it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't her perfect round. And she, like, as I said, a couple of times through the test, she asked him some questions in that test. And it was wonderful to see her really, really riding it because then she can come back in tomorrow and really, really go for it in that music. And it'll be taking those moves. She'll have asked the questions today. For tomorrow. For tomorrow. Yeah. Because that's what she, and, and she will need 
her A game tomorrow. Yeah. Because, yes, you can sit there and say they blew the 90% mark. There'll be a lot of people that'll want to compare, of course, with Jessica's score from Leon. Yes, different judges, different day. We can look at that. But ultimately, there will be that comparison. Of course. But also, if you start any sort of mistake treated, Ingrid will be on our game tomorrow. Helen's yeah. going to be there. Gareth's going to be there. It, it, it's going to be interesting. But today in the Grand Prix, the smile says it all. She's certainly becoming the star of the sport. And look at that, 84.026 for Lottie Fry and uh, Glamadale. Treat some big pats for Glammy there. Oh, yes. He deserves that. Go and have a carrot. <laughs> so, uh, well done, you. And certainly the crowd really, really loving watching the pair of them. And I think tomorrow when there's a full house here for yeah. the freestyle. That's going to be some atmosphere. And that's the difference, isn't it, between having these indoor venues to having a stadium atmosphere at a World Championships. And although actually at the World Championships, it did feel like there was a fabulous atmosphere but it can get a little bit lost through the open roof, whereas here, it is so much more intense. And it'll be such a treat for the public because oh. so many of the people that will be sat in the stands tomorrow won't have seen that freestyle test. They'll know now who Lottie Fry is, they know Glamadale, they've seen the score, they've seen the press reports, but there won't be as many that will have seen that test. Yeah. So, Today, Lottie Fry is uh, leading the way from that man, Gareth Hughes. Full marks to Gareth. And Ingrid Klimka sitting in third. Still plenty of congratulations. With one more on the start list still to come forward. And that will be for France in a moment or two. In fact, I think maybe heading our way right now is uh, going to be Morgan Barbato riding Bolero. Morgan, who used to, of course, ride for Spain until 2018. And when she was riding for Spain, she rode at uh, Olympics and World Championships. That was on a horse called Painted Black, though now she has a horse called Sir Donahall that has also taken her to World Championships as well this year. Now, though, today she's riding Bolero and it'll be interesting with this partnership. It would be her second horse. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Gus of Sir Donahall, as he is known, is absolutely her top ride. And actually, I think probably, I think she would say her horse of a lifetime. She's been through so, so much with him. She actually nearly lost him at a show. Um, he put his leg through a wall and he was never meant to make it back to competitive dressage. And she's brought him back, nursed him back, and competed at World Championships, as you said, which is quite remarkable. Well, Sir Donahall has already had fourth in Madrid and sixth in Lyon on the World Western European League already this year in the freestyle. But this partnership, the final combination today in London. And I think ultimately, we'll be looking for a nice, solid performance. Absolutely, again, really riding that centre line. You can see Bolly going to anticipate the first halt and Morgan was like, no, 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 you can't carry on to Lex, thank you very much. And how hard is that when you're riding horses that where they do learn to predict? Because even when you're riding at home, you still end up, I'm sure you can break the movements up, but nevertheless, you've still got to spend a lot of time riding the connected movement because yeah. that's what you need them to do in a test. Absolutely. Um, my mare does it. She's just so keen. She wants to, to help you the whole way. And, uh, and sometimes that can be... It's a nice problem to have when they're so helpful, but you, you have to keep them guessing somewhat. And, of course, the centre line is one thing that they do in every single test, no matter what level uh, you're riding at. And, uh, and so they know that they're pretty much there either stopping at X or at, at G up the other end where they finish this Grand Prix. Um, and so it's really about testing them. Um, but of course, you know, doing 
those things at home and making those improvements at home are very different to making them in the test and sometimes you have to be brave as a rider and be able to make those corrections in a test environment because otherwise the horses you know think that they can get away with it as soon as they're in a test environment and uh, and yeah and then of course they just push the boundaries even more struggling a little bit in the passage of the PF yeah just not keeping the consistency in those transitions unfortunately just some miscommunications there which is a real shame Bolly just dropping off of her aids going into the PF and then Morgan saying, no, come on, stay with me. That seems to be the common theme of their ride today. So she's going to know that now coming into the canter work. She's going to have to keep him really in front of the leg. Again, some problems there in the canter half passes, just in that middle flying change. Oh, and a miss too. Yeah, lots of mistakes in this line of twos. And that'll come heavy with the marks as well. Nice canter pirouette, well centered, nicely balanced. From this angle, those one time changes look nice down the center line, beautifully straight. And again, like you said with Gareth, the time to ride a, a good line is that centre line, and she's done a good job on that line. And it's pushing the score back in the right direction. Obviously too many mistakes now to, to probably make it back up above the 70. But again, she can use, I think when you know that there's been a few mistakes. You can then use the test as a bit of an educational test for the horse. And, uh, you know, obviously this is on a different scale to what Lottie did with Glamourdale. You know, she's gonna be using this test now to improve on and to be able to make those corrections like she just did there going into the PF, ready for tomorrow. Always learning. Yeah, and it might be that she just thinks about changing her warm-up. We could see as she came in, she dropped her whip. Um, you know, it might mean that he needs less warm-up tomorrow or needs to practice certain movements in the warm-up tomorrow. I know she's going to be really, really disappointed with that, though. Wasn't the end that she was looking for, unfortunately, there for Morgan Mabando and Bellero. As she, quite rightly as well, will be uh, looking to uh, put more points on the uh, scoreboard for the Western European League because she sits second at the moment, then that means that she realistically is in a very strong position to, well, hopefully get qualified. But perhaps with the weaker ride this week, we will see. But there's a lot to happen tomorrow. Yeah. She is a, a real strong contender on the Western European League circuit and she is out. And the thing is, because she's got the two horses, she, she can really contend for a lot of the World Cup qualifiers, which is so great to see. And, and she's really passionate about supporting the league as well. Absolutely. She's uh, been a big, big part of it. The league, of course, at the moment is topped by uh, Ben Myrtle. And, uh, well, whether he's still there after tomorrow, we will wait and see, because I'm sure the likes of Morgan and Ingrid will have something to say about that. Charlotte, who uh, are leading at the moment, and, of course, Lambertville, haven't competed at all this year. Nope. So it'll be an opening score uh, for their car the if they are looking to go all the way to Omaha for the World Cup final come April. I hope so.
that would be some battle. I think that's what the sport wants, it's what we want. But meanwhile, there's the score that Morgan has, whether it's what she wanted or not. 65-7-3-7, which means it is official. London, well done to the world champion. It is, of course, Lottie Fry who wins the Grand Prix test. 84, 84 I go back to a comment earlier. You don't make scores up like that often in the world of Grand Prix. Um, so, yeah, we'll uh, have to wait and see exactly what happens tomorrow, but today it is all Lottie Fry and uh, Gareth Hughes with the most outstanding performance on classic Bria Linka. The teammates from Herning that together helped Great Britain to that team's silver medal, both first and second today. The lady that won the leg on her home ground in Stuttgart, Inga Klimka, finishing in third with Franziska's FRH. And You know, Strictly Come Dancing, you've got <laughs> nothing on that horse. <laughs> no, they haven't. They absolutely haven't. Just had a look, actually, just out of interest, at uh, Jessica von Brandel-Verndel's scores recently on Dallera. So her last Grand Prix, she scored 83.065. So that would be just behind Lottie Fry. Obviously, that isn't the, the that short the test. Yeah. Um, I will see if I can try and find her sh last short Grand Prix. Uh, that was at the finals, and that was 84.793. I listen, it's it, it, it's the great matchup of the sport, and I, I, in a weird way, I hope it waits to Omaha. Yes, I hope it waits as well. And of course, you know, we we always wanted it to happen between Totalus and Vallegro, and it never quite came off. Um, so it would be really, really wonderful to see it between Glamourdale and Dallara. Well, Jessica came back with a bang in Lyon, and there's a lady that certainly deserves a very special mention today, Abby Lyle. 
who I don't think the grid will leave for quite a while. She has finished seven. She broke the 70% barrier. She's made such a jump in her percentage marks. I mean, she is lapping this up. She is. I mean, she is absolutely living her best life right now, isn't she? And uh, on such a high. It's great to see Caroline Chu as well out there in the top eight. Well, she's got to do a little bit of uh, pas de deux <laughs> with Richard Davison because they finished equal eight. So, <laughs> um, Richard and Bubbling, Caroline and uh, Tibiani heading on in and uh, saluting this audience this afternoon who get their chance to say, well done. Oh, off we go. <laughs> yeah, dress such horses have always loved rounds of applause. <laughs> To be fair, I think Abby's actually quite enjoying that. <laughs> I think they're all quite enjoying it, aren't they? Well, yeah, except for Richard, who I'm not sure that he can stop the big bobbling. <laughs> well, there also is, of course, Simone Pierce as well, the Australian star. Another that put in a really remarkable performance and certainly improved from what we saw a couple of weeks back. So uh, tremendous from her. One horse that's taking it all in their stride is Annabelle. She just looks like she's trotting around the arena, just as she did in the test. Very, very relaxed. Yeah, it's, uh, the retrobates all leave. <laughs> we'll stay with these two masters of elegance. But like you say, Annabelle, and uh, Helen Lennon Hannenberg alongside Hans Peter Munderhull and Dream Boy, Block's Dream Boy. This horse is so used to having the exposure of these kind of prize givings. Just another day in the office. Lovely to see, but that means. It is to the top three that they will uh, line up in this uh, FEI Dressage World Cup. We know that we yet get to see them all again tomorrow. Draw an order, we'll wait to see exactly how all that falls into place. Exciting times ahead. Absolutely. I can't wait for the freestyle tomorrow. There's always such a great atmosphere in this London arena. And I think that is going to be increased, especially with having a British one two today. Everybody is going to be incredibly excited to see what is to come for tomorrow. It's going to be a big battle. And this lady will play her role as well. As I said at the time when she uh, was about to start her test, she's one of the most complete horse women, horse riders in the business and has a rich family history, of course, in equestrian sport as well. With the horse that won the World Cup round in Stuttgart this year, Inga Klimke third today on Franciscus. And actually, that's her daughter with her, joining her into the arena today, which is lovely to see. Oh, that is good to see. Well, second place today and another really fine, fine performance from a man that is making a habit of putting in fine, fine performances. It is Gareth Hughes, the national champion of British dressage, finishing in second. But it is the world champion that comes out on top in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix here in London. Lottie Fry, well done. And the Van Olsts, Glamourdale. And a big shout out to the grooms as well, who all do such a fabulous job of getting these horses ready for the riders. You can see Rich Neal there with Glamourdale and Steph with Gareth and the lovely Berlinka. These grooms work tirelessly for their riders and for their horses, and it's great that they're recognized too. It certainly is, and all of the team behind the scenes as well, as we enjoy the national anthem of our winning nation, presented, of course, by Charlotte Fry and Glamourdale, Great Britain.
Well, actually, with a little bit of luck, we will be able to listen in now and listen to Lee McKenzie. But my goodness, you've had some great days on this horse. But a personal best here in London, that must be so special. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And I think he, he also knew it was special. And he just, he absolutely loved it. And so did I. And yeah, it felt amazing. It's such an honor for all of us to see this, clo this horse up and close and, and you having such a great time on him. I know you were really keen to bring him to this show and you've obviously got tomorrow night as well, but what makes this show so special? Is he really is in his element. Um, well, yeah, it's just, oh, we lost the rosette. <laughs> um, just being able to compete in England again and to be able to bring Glamadel uh, to compete here in London for the first time, uh, it's just amazing, and I hope uh, all the audience and everyone here enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed it. I think we can safely say they certainly did. Lottie, huge congratulations. Congratulations to Lottie Fry. Well, well, there we go. Here. We enjoyed it. We loved it. Looking forward to tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but the crowd loved it as well. And she, a wonderful ambassador for the uh, sport, both the British dressage and for the international sport as well, receiving all of her awards, of course. It is Horse and Hound, Devacar. I think that champagne might get drunk quite soon tonight. <laughs> No, no, she's got a big pay tomorrow. She can't be drinking tomorrow. Well, you know, there's a lot of them. There's a big team. They can share the champagne around. And actually, that was something I was going to add, but of course, we went to the anthem. The grooms, and I've always said in this sport, it's a trifecta. Horse, a rider, and a groom. You have to have the three together. Yeah. But every, especially in the international sport, it is a team. And I mean, I know you'll back this up. Because it's not just the groom, the rider, and the horse. No, it's, it's a village. Barrier. <laughs> it is. It's like there's this ginormous operation yeah. to bring that together. Yeah, and without every single ingredient of that village, it wouldn't be possible for, for us to go out and perform at our best ability. And, you know, whether it's the chiropractor, like you say, or the physio, or the nutritionist for the, the horse and for the rider, you know, each person plays such an instrumental role in getting the best out of the rider and the best out of the horse. And then, of course, it's down to the partnership to perform on the day. Well, that partnership certainly know how to perform on the day and have found their way to the very highest levels of this sport. I must just say as well, one thing that blew me away when I met Glamourdale at the World Championships, and you're going to laugh at this, wasn't his amazing extended trot, obviously that did blow me away. He has got the smallest ears I think I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first thing I noticed when I saw him in the stable. We were in the same block. They don't look that small there in the picture, but honestly, in real life, they are tiny. <laughs> well, there you go. You learn something new every fact. day. A fun fact. <laughs> well, there you have it. Fact of the day. The horse with the little ears called Glamadel came to the big city called London and went home as the winner of the Grand Prix. But it's all to play for tomorrow night because that is when the points are handed out for the FBI Dressage World Cup. That is when this arena will be filled to the gunnels. We have a full house to enjoy the FBI Dressage World Cup freestyle. Today, so many stories, but uh, Tash, how would you sum it up? Oh my goodness, exciting, thrilling, just everything that dressage should be. And, you know, we've seen some amazing riders, some incredible horses and some, yeah, some just brilliant dressage. And it's been so, so close. And I just think it's going to get even closer for tomorrow. It's really all to play for in the freestyle. And, you know, we're going to see these wonderful performances coming out tomorrow. And personally, I can't wait to see this partnership, but I also can't wait to see the battle for second, third, and fourth place. Let's look forward to it all. Natasha Baker, thank you very much.
Thank you, Gareth. Well, get excited. Make sure you're with us, of course, on FEI TV. Tomorrow, when we find out what happens in the freestyle. But today, the Grand Prix is all Lottie Fries.